been my basketball bag. All right, boys. So you're going to be my little experiment for the day. Um, we're going to do an activity today in class. You're going to split up into groups, and we're going to review and recap. And it's a competition between groups who understands everything the best that they've learned so far. Um, but today's the last week and the last class of what we've worked on over the last three weeks. So we're going to try and recap everything we've learned for this month um, to make sure you actually absorbed it instead of just piling more information on to what you've already learned. Cool? Um, first things first, did everyone do their meditations? Yeah. We did? Everyone did them? Raise your hand if you didn't do them. You didn't do them? I wasn't here. Oh, okay, you weren't here. He gets a pass, he wasn't here. Boys, but the, we send the playlist, it's all online. So you can always go back and watch notes. Or say like in three months from now you want to remember how to meditate, you can go back and watch the videos. Cool. What are our reflections? My biggest reflection was like how it was hard for me to like at first to like really like be compassionate towards someone that was like better than me at something. Okay. And so that's what I noticed at first. Okay. And so it was like it was a huge like notice. So that's good. So what is that an example of? The ego. That is the, the separate ego, right? So if we're a separate ego, it creates a what? You remember that word I used? Hierarchy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? You see someone above or below you or better or worse, right? So that's really good. So it's working on that muscle of resistance, which is helping with what? What's the wing of mindfulness? One of them. Non-judgment, right? If it's a struggle for you to quote unquote be compassionate towards someone better than you, that's because you're judging the situation. Make sense? Really good reflection. Who else? I started like seeing people in a different way. Like I started to understand like people's struggles. Like, okay, that's really good. You should definitely, if you did this for five days, you should see people differently, right? You're, you're not fully absorbed in all your own struggles. You actually see them and you're like, oh, they have the same problems I do. That's really good. Again, it's lessening that separate ego. So it hopefully it helps you to stop judging as much, which is what we're trying to get to. What else? That was a great reflection. Come on, y'all. If everyone did the meditations, this should be easy. What were the biggest reflections? OK. Do you guys have like a real life example you want to share? You don't have to say their name, but like, were you in a conversation with someone? Okay, that's really good, right? So we're, we're getting rid of that bias of we instantly judge people or judge an independent event. Okay, there's way more that goes into it. I felt less of my judging myself. That's, boom, that's a big one, right? Because if you outwardly judge others or situations more, what happens inwardly? You judge yourself more, right? So when we beat ourselves up, um, that's a direct correlation to judging other people too. So that's really good. Like I did one of them outside, and like there were birds chirping, and like I like I liked it, and, mm -hmm. and, that, and then I realized like that's a judgment towards it. That's that's beautiful. So see how you guys start to meditate more and you get more subtle. That's a really subtle realization. That's awesome. So that's an example of clinging, right? So he's judging the birds. He liked it. That's awesome that you liked it. Okay, but if you become dependent on that, why is that an issue? You get attached. You get attached. Is that going to cause you more struggle? What did I say the aim is for you guys? I'm trying to bring you more what? Power and freedom, right? Freedom means you're not dependent on something. So that's really good. You notice that you judge the bird. So it's, we do it so habitually, we don't even realize we do it with most things that we do. Anybody else? These are really good discussions. Let's go one more. One more, and then we'll move on. Someone that hasn't talked. Did you do it? Okay, what's your reflection? My reflection was it was just it was hard to like show like at first to like feel compassion towards people you think negatively like, okay. or like think are like bad people. Yeah. Like, so that's really good. So is that resist resistance though the goal? Gold? Right? That's what actually gets you really good. Is that that's the muscle we're trying to build is to get over that resistance. Cool? So should we think it's bad that if I'm resisting or clinging to something? 
No, that's how you get good at it, right? You need it to improve it. Cool? You all on the same page? What do we think so far about the first three cl classes? Do you think it's interesting? Yeah, Some, something we haven't learned before? Do you think this is something that can help you in sport and life? OK, cool. So what we're going to do today, it's a review day. We're going to split into groups. So how many people do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, you're right. OK, so let's split into four groups. Four people for, per group. I don't care what the groups are. You have 30 seconds to do it. I'm going to run out and turn the music down. You're going to go into four corners of the room. Group of four, group of four, group of four, group of four. Hustle. All right. You don't, none of you have a writing utensil? So each, actually, yeah. Who else doesn't have a writing utensil? You guys can pull over chairs so you can sit down, or that's fine. Just make sure when you guys leave that you put everything back. Actually, maybe not if I do this with every group. We'll see. We're going to see how this goes. Who else needs a writing utensil? Make sure you return it, Jadon. Cool? All right, eyes and ears. Listen up. So. I don't have a better system for it, but I'm going to be the judge, OK? Your goal as a group is you're trying to have the best explanation and understanding of something. So for every review, what is that noise? You good? OK. So for every review, so I'm going to, we're going to go over a term, OK? Your group independently, so don't say your answers loudly. The reason we're doing it in groups independently is so you can't steal other people's answers, right? You're trying to explain it in the best of your understanding. Whoever has the best understanding explanation and shows a real life example, so it could be in sport or in life, doesn't matter. Okay, whoever, in my opinion, has the best understanding of the concept, the best group, wins a point. And we'll keep track of our points through reviewing. Does that sound good? Cool? So we're going to go through each different day. Maybe I'll do it randomly. We'll see. Okay? The first is what is mind and neuroplasticity, and what are examples of this? in real life. Mind and neuroplasticity. So talk amongst your groups. You have a minute. Let's do a minute and a half for each one I ask. We'll see how that works. And you're going to have to have designate a speaker. So let's go just neuroplasticity. You have a deep understanding of the explanation, a real life example of what it is. You guys can look at your notes too. You got a minute left. You guys know what track you're going down? Okay. Do you guys know what you're doing? None of you remember what that term is? You weren't there? OK. I have neuroplasticity. I have the word, and then I think that's mindfulness. OK. That's mindfulness. You're good. So I'm going to need a guess, at least. Sound good? That's a, is it OK not to know, though? That's why we're doing it. All right, gang. All right. So everybody needs a designated speaker, OK? Does everyone have it written down? Yes or no? You have to have it written down, because I don't want Aiden to say his answer, and then you guys try and change your answer based on what Aiden says. What? 30 more seconds. OK, write them down. From now on, when we do it, you got to write it down so that other people can't steal the answers. All right, do you guys have it, Aiden?
And gang, is it OK if you don't know what it is and you guys guess? That's the point of a review and recap. It's actually a good thing if some of you don't know what it is, because that's why we, we're doing it. Cool? All right, for the sake of time, we got to go. Aiden, what's your group got? Okay, and then what's your real life example? Um, so if somebody thinks that uh, they were born with like a mad personality, I guess, they're able to change their way of thinking and change it to like a happy personality. It has the potential to. And I'll go through the exact definition and explanation. Good job, Aiden. What's your group got? Uh, we said neuroplasticity is living in the moment or living in the present. Okay. And then our real life is walking my dog in the park and then <laughs> enjoying the moment. OK, so this is good. OK, I'm going to explain everyone's answers. That's not as bad as you think it is. What do we got, Adley? That's good. That's pretty good. OK. OK, what's your real life example? Like, uh, like basketball. If you <clears throat> play basketball, if you miss a shot, it just can't take a certain shot. Or if you lose that chance to make the right shot, just next shot, stuff like that. OK, so all of us are close. All of us are close. I'm thinking right now I'm going to give your team half a point and your team half a point. You had a better real life example. You had a better definition. But listen, this is what neuroplasticity is. It's a potential for our mind to change itself, right? So I think you said you could meditate and rewire whatever patterns of thought you have. That's perfect. Neuroplasticity also means they can change structurally, right? So the amygdala is the center of our brain of emotion, right? So if I'm more reactive and emotional, do you think that amygdala gets bigger? Yes, right? Say I become less reaction, more calm, do you think the amygdala might get smaller? Yes. So it's not just thoughts, right? It literally, the structure of your brain can change. And that's powerful. Why? Why is it important to know that? It, is it very optimistic and hopeful to know that you can literally change essentially into whatever you want to be if you use meditation correctly? Yeah. Isn't that kind of cool? Yeah. So you can be whoever you want to be, and that's why it's important to understand the concept. Cool? We're all good? What was the um, so the potential for your mind to change itself structurally and cognitively. Cool? We're all on the same page? That was pretty good. Now, the reason I like their definition, though, is what's the way you maximize neuroplasticity? You have to pay really close attention to what's going on. Okay, you got to pay really, really close attention to the moment because that's what can actually help you change itself. That's what meditation is, right? Really, really specific attention on something right now. Cool? So that's why I did actually like your guys' explanation. It just was a little off. You're good. So we got half a point. Can we tra keep track of our points as a team? Okay. OK, cool. Awesome. Let's go dimensions of the mind. Tie the names of the dimensions of the mind to the actual um, definition, what each person is, and real life example. I'm going to give you two minutes. Dimensions of the mind. What? Dimensions of the mind, OK? So you're writing down who the people are, what that definition means, and then an example of it in real life in action. Yep, everybody needs it written down. Yep, so you have to find what each person is and then a real life example of them in use.
catching your thoughts on how much more. So like, Observes the thoughts and then the watcher has to watch the thoughts. For the How are you guys doing over here? Are you on your examples yet? Okay. Good work. How are you guys down here? Good. Did you do a real life example? No, not yet. Oh, actually, uh, oh, I know one. Yeah, if I stood up there, I Oh, yeah, you were. <laughs> All right. You guys still working? How much more time? 30 seconds? Okay. All right. You guys can finish up your thoughts. Okay. Eyes and ears. This group's going first. Okay, what's a real life example? Okay, you're good, you're good, okay? Move on to the next group, I'll come back around, you guys need a real life example. Cool, why do you think I'm asking for what it means but real life example? Does it, yeah, does it matter if you know a definition but don't know how it looks like in real life? It means nothing then, okay? Adley, what do your, your team got? You're on the right track. How would you use them? <laughs> you're good. So you were close. That was pretty good. What does your group got? Okay. What's your real life example? Okay, and you're watching it? Okay. Aiden, what's your group got? And after you're done talking, eyes and ears on the group. The dictator is person one, watcher two, and the wise three. And the dictator is pretty much um, like the judgmental thoughts almost. And just like your normal like baseline thoughts. And then the watcher sits back and observes the thoughts. And then the wise is the ability to act on those thoughts. And so my example was, um, let's say in basketball, you shoot a shot and miss. Okay, that's good. What do you guys got for your real life example? Well, like, the dictator is like airballing, so that's the thought. Literally said the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Like, the dictator is like airballing, and then your thoughts over control you, and then the watcher catches it, and then the wise just says it's just one shot. That's the play. Okay, that's good. That's good. What was. Okay. I think I'm going to give. Their, their real life example for half a point. No one's getting half a point for the definition though because I was looking for the dictator. So all of you knew the names, but what is the dictator? When is it relevant? When is it ever in control? When you're not present. When you're judgmental. When you're not present, when there's no what? When there's no, who's person two? Eyes and ears, right? When there's no watcher, then the dictator is there, right? He's in control. Can you understand what you don't see? No, you're blind, right? When the dictator is in control, you are blind. So like you said, when you airball and you have the thought of you suck, you don't see that thought. It's you, you blindly fuse with it, you blindly listen to it, and then it causes emotions that cause you to play worse. Does that make sense? So the biggest thing to understand about that is the dictator is on when you're not watching. So that you're mindless, you're blind, 
you have no control. Cool? From the dictator? Yes. Majority of your thoughts come from when you're mindless. Because if you're watching, are you thinking? No. no. Right? That's, that's why it's kind of cool. That's why meditation is, normally leads to less thoughts, is because you're absorbed in watching. You're not thinking. Thoughts are always coming from what? Outside of? Hold the balls. Okay? Thoughts are coming from what? Normally outside of this moment. Right? Cool? Guys, I know we're in groups. When I'm talking, we're not talking. Cool? All right. What do we think so far? Are we liking the group activity? Cool. I am too. I think you guys are doing a good job. Let's do, what is the monkey mind, focus, and concentration? How do they relate? What are the definitions, examples in real world? The monkey mind and focus. Yep. idea. Can't see it. <laughs> That's a problem. You guys got both, meaning and example? Yeah. Okay. Where are you guys at? You got meaning and example? You're good? You guys know what you're writing? Yeah, he just doesn't know how to spell it right. That doesn't matter how, if, as long as you have it written and then you talk aloud. Okay. Thirty seconds, meaning and real life example. And then I put this moment in my So that's like kinda how you Well, yeah. I mean, you can explain both and how they correlate. Both of them don't really matter if you don't explain one or the other. And starting now, groups, make sure you have different people write stuff down so it's not just one person. Or I would encourage everyone to write stuff down. All right? Time. Adley, your group's going first. Okay. That's good. That's good. What's your group got?
Okay. Yep. Uh, focus is the battery pack to mindfulness. What does that mean? So it means you can hold uh, mindfulness for. So uh, you can hold it longer if what? You have a bigger battery pack. Okay. Okay. That's good. Is that it, Connor? Okay. Aiden, your group? Um, the monkey mind is when your mind drifts from thought to thought or the scattered mind, and then focus, is, yeah, the battery pack to mindfulness, and it's the ability to put all your attention onto one specific thing. And so a real life example that correlates both of them is like during a, during a lecture in school, when uh, your mind is scattered and coming from thought to thought, and then your ability to focus and focus on regain focus on the teacher and what she's talking about. Okay. Yeah, and I was, like, I was thinking, like... Guys, when they're talking, what are you doing? You're listening. If you're, like, um, like a freshman on varsity and you're, like, just getting in, your thoughts are going to be, like, all over because you're so nervous. Yep. And it's, like, you're not focused because you have, like, a million thoughts jumping through your head. That's good. Your group? So we said monkey mind, monkey mind was just, like, from thought to thought. Our example was like aimlessly scrolling on TikTok or Instagram and you can't even like remember what happened five videos ago and you're just like thinking about a different thing every video. And then focus, we said like how long you can stay focused on something and if you like stray away, you're gonna go right back to being focused. And then our real life example would be like sitting in the classroom taking a test and you get sidetracked from the test and then just have to go right back. Okay. So, you're the only one that mentioned real focus being what? Recoming back to the moment, right? Resetting, recollection. That was one word I was looking for, right? Scattered, you collect, you recollect. Okay, so you get a full point just because you mentioned that. Um, you get a half point, you get a half point, and you get a half point because you mentioned focus is a battery pack to mindfulness. Cool? And so, let's go. Your group is one. So we're going to go, full point is worth two. There we go, that's a score. Cool? So I actually gave you two points, one point, one point, one point. Got it? Are we three? There, one. You guys are two, three, four. Cool? One, two, three, four. All right, now, we ready for the next one? Yeah. Yeah? Let's go. What are the wings of mindfulness? Define each wing and a real life example of why it's a wing of mindfulness. So you need the exact definition of mindfulness, the two wings, what they are, and a real life example of it in action. Are you guys winning right now? Yeah. yeah, you are. You're defining mindfulness, what the two wings are, and a real life example. Yeah. 
you guys know what you're doing? How much more time we need, gang? Minute. Give you a minute. And guys, if you want to win over the other group, you have to be extra. Can't just be a straight definition, it's your own understanding. All right, we good? Okay, your group's going first. Mindfulness is on-purpose awareness in this moment with judgment or without judgment. Okay. And then the wings are objective, which is the view that you see yourself. Or, I mean, objective is the view without ego, and ego is the way you're seeing yourself. And then subjective is the view with choice. Okay. We'll talk about it. Um, for mindfulness, you said it is purposely being aware of the present without any judgment. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. That was good. That's a good definition. <laughs> and then the two wings were the non judgment and watch. Okay. And then our real life example was like when you wake up in the morning. Okay. This group. So for mindfulness, it says thinking without judgment, and then for the wings of mindfulness is non-judgment and perception as a way of seeing. And then for the real life, you see a person walking on the side of the street, and you don't judge them by what their clothes or what they look like. Instead, you see them as a person, place yourself, and you have compassion for them. Okay. 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 Cool. All of you did pretty good. I don't think I'm going to give anybody a point because for a real life example, okay, let's think of something common in sports, right? What is non-judgment doing? It's looking at the situation as what? For how it is. You're not like, dislike, bad, good, right? Do you have to judge something to know if it's helpful or unhelpful? No. 
right? So when we're not judging, are we changing anything or trying to control anything? No, which is what kind of your example was getting at. Um, yours was good. I, I actually, I lied. I want to give your group a point and your group a point, OK? And your group a point. Because you talked about the person, too. I like the person example, but I'm trying to, that's a great example, but I'm trying to think of one that's a little more subtle and harder to be easy to talk about, which would be, let's say, basketball, right? Or say you're meditating with thoughts or distractions, right? If you're clinging or resisting any of those thoughts, are you judging them? Yeah, you're not seeing it, oh. It's making noise when I'm trying to meditate. You're not stating what it is, right? So non-judgment, stating what it is. Judging is you have a preference with what's going on. So that adds a layer of perception. Does that make sense, boys? The reason I'm giving you a point is because you talked about objective and subjective. I like that, OK? Objective is what is going on without your preferences inside of it. Your judging adds a second layer to reality, which does that distort it? Yeah, that messes up the picture, and you can't see clearly. Cool? Otherwise, it looks like. You don't think for mindfulness. Sound good? It's awareness of this moment non-judgmentally. Otherwise, I think everyone had a pretty good, good gist. Cool? Do we like this group activity? OK. Don't worry about the points. I did a terrible job grading points. But you guys did a great job talking with, with each other. So let's go back to our seats. OK, we're going to talk about the meditation for the week. I didn't get through nearly as much as I wanted to, but those are the main ones that we should know. What'd you say? Today? 10.15. Um, we have four minutes. All right, boys, eyes and ears. So last week, what was the amount of meditation minutes? So what's it going to be this week? Seven. OK, I'm, we're going to go back to the focus meditation. We're going to go back to simplicity and boring, because what does our mind do when that happens? Wants to wander. That's exactly what we're trying to train for, to stop the wandering. Cool? So you're going to be doing seven minutes for five days a week is our agreement, right? OK. So that means 35 minutes total. Is that my correct math? OK. So 35 minutes total in a week. OK. If we're bumping it up this high and you do it five days a week, we should continue to see changes, right? We're definitely altering. We're tapping into that neuroplasticity. Our brain is going to change. We're going to see differently. Does that mean it's working? Yes. If you're seeing differently, it is working. Okay. Um, now, what I am going to add is I want to give you a tool that you can use at any single moment. So say you're overwhelmed, or you're about to get on the court, or there's something that you want to get into that state when you're meditating, when you're calm and at ease. Okay. I'm going to teach you a mantra that you can do for four sets, Aiden's done this before, um, that you can do whenever you're trying to prep for a game or get in that zone or the flow state to try and ease yourself into it, I'm going to give this to you. Okay? This isn't your activity. It's something you should do sporadically throughout the day. So let's do this. You have seven minutes in the morning of the in-out that you already know how to do. Are we all clear about that? Yeah. And when we get lost, we note it and come back, correct? That's all it is. Okay? So you're seven minutes, five, minute, or five days a week. Okay? This mantra, I want you to use at least one day of the week. It takes 15, 20 seconds. So there's no way you can't do this once a day. Just to get in the habit of when you're overwhelmed or you're anxious or you're overthinking something, you can use this tool. Does that make sense? So this is a great primer that can be a lot quicker than having to sit down for seven minutes. Got it? What you're going to be writing down, there's eight sets of breaths, or sorry, four sets of breaths. A set of breath means you inhale and exhale. Does that make sense? So everyone write that down. Four sets of breaths. In, out. You're writing these words down. In, out, deep, slow, calm, ease, smile, release. OK? So on the first one, I'm just doing like my normal in out in the morning, right? I'm subtly saying in my mind, in, out, OK? But on the next set of the breath, what are we going to say softly in our mind in the inhale? Deep, slow. On the next inhale, calm, ease. 
And then the last one, it doesn't mean you start cheesing, but you can gently smile as you inhale and release. Does that make sense? Um, but this takes 20 seconds, and you can do this whenever you feel that you're out of balance, right? And it will recenter you. Does that sound good? So we're going to do it right now, and that's all we have for time. We, can't, we don't have enough time to do the in and out. So everyone get in their meditative position. Okay, we're just going to go through, I'm going to say start and probably stop in 30 seconds. You're just going to go through that mantra. Cool. When would you use this? Frustrated, overwhelmed, overthinking, anxious, sad. Okay, it's just a quick thing to reset you. Is this your activity in the morning? No, Jadon, it's not. You do it once a day, whenever you want. Okay, you don't have to sit in a perfect position like this. You could be standing before you go play basketball and you do this in your head. Does that make sense? but seven minutes of the in-out that you've already learned in the morning. Are we all clear on that? We know what we're doing? Because again, if you do it for five days for seven minutes, next week you'll come back with a great reflection like we did in the beginning where everyone was talking because they were seeing differences, which is good, which is what we want. Cool? All right, in your position. Ready? Time. Okay, did everyone get through the set? Did anyone forget what the words were? Yeah. I was going to say. So, did everyone write it down though? Yeah. Okay, so you can remember them. Listen, this is a challenge. For your seven minutes, I want you to try and not move. Okay? Is that going to be very difficult? Yes. Okay, but what should you do if you have that urge to move? Fall what? Okay. Behind. Everyone write that down. Fall behind. When you have that urge to move, is that that gold? that I was talking about, that's gold for you, right? To grow your ability to be mindful and fall behind, okay? So do your best of your ability in those seven minutes. You're trying not to move. Cool? Great work today, boys. Thanks, buddy.